I didn't know school could be this much fun. Did you? <laughs> Praise God. Jesus. Hello, everybody. It's Friday on the KCBC, and we're just, hey, we're not excited because it's a weekend. We're excited because Jesus is in the room. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go in our Bibles once again to Mark chapter 5. Now, we're talking about the rank and file of the, the devil's kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. We have been delivered from the, the authority of darkness, translated into the kingdom of God's agape son, God's dear, loving king's kingdom. Amen. That's Colossians, of course, first chapter. Now, <clears throat> let's go back where we were. Let, let's, let's begin right here again in the seventh verse of the fifth chapter of Mark, uh, ver verse 6, the, the madman of Gadara, when he saw Jesus afar off, a long ways off. See, it, it wasn't the fact that he saw him a long ways off, but, but the, the Jesus anointing and the power of God just permeated that whole, that whole area. I mean, it, it, it was just powerful. And he just fell on his face and worshiped him. Now, Jesus said in verse 8, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Verse 7, then, That devil in this man cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, torment me not. I adjure you by God. How could he say that? Because he had the authority to say this. I adjure you. Torment me not. And Jesus said, what is your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Three to six thousand, a legion, a Roman legion. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding all the devils, all of them, how thousands of them, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Now the people didn't hear that. Of course, Jesus did. And Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake. There were about 2,000 of them, and they were choked in the sea. 2,000 screaming, squalling, dying pigs. Uh, I, I, can, I can't even imagine what a squally, nasty, weird frightening sound that must have been, particularly to the, 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 this herd was food for Roman soldiers. And they're out there guarding those things with their lives. I mean, some of them, these, these, this, this whole herd, there's no telling what the Romans will do to them for not taking care of them. It scared all of them silly. Now, all of this noise, all of this screaming of those pigs, and they're not even paying any attention to Jesus and this madman. They're out there guarding those things, and they just, they never heard anything like it in their life. 2,000 hogs screaming and squalling under the power of those devils. It was not because they were drowning. It's because there's devils in them. There's devils in them. They're squealing and screaming and hollering and squalling. And they ran violently. A whole herd of them, 2,000 of them, ran off the edge of that cliff. Enough to frighten anybody around. They that fed the swine fled, fled, fled. They ran. They were so scared. They told it in the city and in the country. They went out to see what was done. Faith Say it with me. Faith, Faith 
always prepares for what it expects, what it believes is going to take place. When they came to Jesus and see him was that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Where did the clothes come from? Hmm. Well, wait a minute, brother, let me give it. No, no, no. Jesus took the clothes with which to dress him. He knew where he was going, fully expected to deliver this man. That's the reason he went over there in the first place. Knowing what was going to happen, he took clothes with which to dress him. That all, that's, that's right there is where you're supposed to say amen. amen. That's a good shouting spot. Go prepared. Yes, sir. I, uh, well, let's go back to Jamaica. We talked about that earlier in the week. I was there back, Jamaican independence. It was the first year of independence of Jamaica. And I'm telling you, it was party time in Jamaica. And they got their independence, you know, from Great Britain and all. And uh, so uh, I, I, I was supposed to begin what I was doing on Monday. And of course, I went in early. And so Sunday morning um, in, in uh, Spanish Town, and uh, the, the church there pastored, um, the open Bible church there was pastored by a man that, that I had met before. And so I went to church that morning. Now, the week before, a, a group of partners in Shreveport contacted me and said, Brother Copeland, could we have a day apart? I said, what's a day apart? They said, well, we have rented a room at a, a local hotel here, and we want, we want you to come just teach faith to us for, you know, for a while there for a day. And would you do that? And I said, well, then now that's the same church where Jerry Savelle was saved and where Carolyn Savelle was raised there in Shreveport. It's, it's the same church. And there was a group of people there that we had had a lot of time that we had one three week meeting in that church. Anyway, I said, well, sure, I'd be glad to do that. So I went over there and did that. It started at nine o'clock in the morning. They brought lunch in. Went through lunch. Went through that afternoon. It went to five o'clock that afternoon. Just, just on faith, just like we're doing here. On we just never quit. We just, and they brought lunch into the into, into that room. We ate right there in that room. Five o'clock came. Six o'clock came. Seven o'clock came. They said, "Well, good." I thought, "Well, good." You know, they said, "But we have another meeting at the Citadel." And we and I said. Okay. Now, I preached all day long. Went straight to Jamaica. Finished on that weekend. Now, with that, and then, then Sunday morning, I'm in Jamaica. And so I went over to Brother Keith's church, and he said, Come on up and sit on the platform. I said, Okay. So I went up there and sat down. And, and um, he said, Brother Copeland, you take the morning service. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I walked up there and just to the podium. I turned around. And I said, Keith, how, how, you know, how, how long should I go here? He said, 
Uh, well, let them off for lunch. I said, well, what time are we having lunch? Oh, about two. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, you know, let them off for lunch. If you don't, don't, don't give them lunch if you don't want to. I said, well, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll take off for lunch. Okay, then. at two o'clock. So that was 9, 30, 10, something like that. And so we let them off for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> And I, by, by this time, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. I could, I, could, I was about like this by that time. <laughs> and so, and a, that microphone about that big, and I was, I was, I was in there praying. I didn't, I went over and took a taste of that fried chicken, they fried it in coconut oil, and I didn't think I wanted any more of that. Yeah, <laughs> it looked really good, but I, I did swallow that bite. <laughs> Forget that. <clears throat> so to make, the, make a long story short, I did this back before, well, before I walked out there. I said, Lord, and I said the same thing. I, I, I got out there. I took the microphone and I held it up there like this. I said, if I was asked my voice if it's a heal, it's saying no. If I was to ask you if I'm healed, you'd say no. I didn't ask my voice, and I said, I'm going to ask you. I asked the word, and it said, Yes, by his stripes you were healed. It came back just like that. Preached until five o'clock that afternoon. Yeah. My voice is getting stronger and bigger. Yeah. Now remember, faith always prepares. Remember what, where we were on that? So, and that church was packed out. Man, there were people all over the place. And this, this four young men brought this woman in there. I found out later it was, it was their, it was either their mother, their, I think it was their grandmother. Anyway, you remember the woman that could in no wise lift herself up? This woman could in no wise lift herself up. They, they brought her in there. She was like a ball. She was in a ball. I'm telling you, I, I mean, she looked like, like a ball. She just, and so they cared, brought her in there, <clears throat> put, a, put her in a sheet and laid her down on the floor. Now, when I saw that, then of course it was pretty obvious, but I'm, I'm still preaching healing. I'm preaching Mark 11, 24 and 1 Peter 2, 24 and, you know, and <clears throat> I saw that and it was right at a, about five o'clock and suddenly there was a crutch went right straight up. Yeah. You get somewhere after that third or fourth hour and I'm telling you the power of God falls. That crust went straight up. I want you to know the party was on, brother. <laughs> that woman jumped up from there and began to dance. And she, I'm telling you, dancing. And she put on her shoes. She brought her shoes to that service. Amen. It's shouting time at KCBC. She brought her shoes to that service. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Just, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. They saw him sitting clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They saw it told, uh, and they that saw it told it had befell to him that possessed with the devil. And concerning the swine, they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. They, they get out of here, please. Just go. Will you go? Will you just get out of here? So what did he do? He left. And as he would come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Jesus, let me go with you. I, I need, I need you. 
I, I, I want to go, please. He said, no, go home to your friends. Tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Compassion, love. Let me remind you, let me remind you big time here, because he's about, he, Jesus is assigning him to go right back into the place where, where he came from and where all of this started, and it's just not all that far away. Amen. Now, Professor Greg, Nicopolis, those 10 cities in, in relationship to where they were right there at the Galilee. That's not very far away, is it? It surrounds the Galilee. Yeah. Part of the Galilee. So it's just, there's just this, this 10 city area that surround that, that, it's just right here. Now he's in a, he has an assignment. Remember those devils had an assignment. Now this man has an assignment. On my list of first things you want to know when I get to heaven, I want to know his name. <laughs> Brother Legion, that ain't going to get it. <laughs> that wasn't his name. That was the name of that demon that was controlling him. So, now I, I want you to get the proximity of this. 1 John chapter 4 the 18th verse. Let's go there quickly. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected. His love is developed. His love grows. How does that happen? Second chapter, fifth verse. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. It grows, it develops because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. Romans 10, 17. Okay, you follow me now? So now notice this. And verse 12, we love one another. So hereby know we, we dwell in him and he in us, but he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and that person in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love perfected and developed. Herein is our love perfected and developed that we may have boldness. Amen. Don't you ever back off of a devil because you're full of the love of God. Amen. God is love. You are full of God. And you have his name. You're named after him. If you've ever read Ephesians, the third chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. Herein is our love perfected that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but mature love cast out fear because fear hath torment. He that fears is not mature in love. You go back and you preach love. <clears throat> he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. All of them marveled at it. What a message. Now, all of that whole area, the whole area thought that this mad screaming devil that never slept and cut himself and could tear and rip shackles off his body into pieces, thought he was a God, 
and they were greatly frightened of him. The thing never sleeps, and he howled and bawled all night long, and nobody could sleep for him. They had to finally learn how, and, and probably, I'm saying probably, you understand? But I understand fear, and I understand the minds of people. They, they most probably would begin to worship this thing, trying to get it shut up and get it off of their minds where at least they could sleep because those screams and hollers were not human. Not human. And it took over that whole region. The whole area was crippled and paralyzed with fear. They were afraid of the Romans. They were, they, 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 they were afraid of everything around them, and they got this thing living in the midst of them. So he goes back home, and he begins to preach the love of God. And he begins to talk about this Savior, this man you know, I finally, I finally found out his name. His name is Jesus. I didn't know who he was, but I saw in his eyes that he loved me and he brought clothes for me. And they weren't some secondhand missionary clothes. They were new. It's new stuff. First new suit I ever had in my life. You like my new suit? I, Jesus gave it to me. He had it with him when he set me free. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. He yes. brought it. He brought it for me. Yes. He brought it for me. Now, see, we, you and I don't know what opened the door, but he did. Hmm? He knew what it was. Glory. He knew what it was. Yeah. Well, he, he knew where that devil got a hold of him. I don't know what it was. Didn't have to be all that serious, but whatever it was, it got on his mind. Here's something else. I don't know whether he was a Jew or not. Most likely was because Jesus was sent first to the house of Israel. But you don't know that. But something got in his life. I don't know how much family he has, where he had any family or not. I don't know how old he was. But I know this, he became a good preacher. Now, I submit this to you. Did Jesus call him? Yes. Did he send him? Yes. He was an apostle. Amen. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Amen. And we're out of time. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.